It's time to say goodbye to the 2000s and to Logitech's reign in the Universal Remote game. About two years ago, Unfolded Circle had a Kickstarter for the Remote 2, and back then they were called YIO. And I think we can all agree that Unfolded Circle is much better. Well, they have done it. For the past few months, they have been shipping Remote 2s to Kickstarter backers. It's here, it's real, it doesn't actually do that. The box and packaging are amazing, 10 out of 10. There's some nice touches that I won't spoil because it's a really nice surprise when you open it. Let's get to the remote because it has more features than Iron Man's suit. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, infrared learning and sending, 3.5 millimeter jacks for IR extenders, physical buttons, OLED touchscreen, full local control, no connection to any cloud service or subscription. That shouldn't have to be a feature in 2023, but here we are. Macros and activities. It has Home Assistant integration, Rune and Android TV integration, Sonos, Roku integration, OpenHab, Ikea, and Kodi integration. I know that sentence was a little bit weird, but I didn't want to keep saying integration. Integration, plus a load more. But I do have to say that not everything is switched on or ready yet. They're still working on new firmwares to include everything on that list. Uh, the big ones like Home Assistant, Android TV, Sonos, and Roku are working now, and some things like OpenHab and Kodi will come later, but should be ready for the full public release. They have published a software roadmap, uh, the link is below, where you can find everything that's coming up and the estimated release date for those things. They have been pretty good at being on track so far. Physically, this remote is beautiful. It feels nice in the hand. It's a bit heavier than some other remotes coming in at 300 grams, but that's because it's it's all metal, apart from the buttons and touchscreen, of course, and some other plastic bits, but the casing is metal. Now, all of the action happens inside the remote, not the dock. More on that later. It has physical navigation buttons and volume buttons along with some other auxiliary buttons. Of course, all of the physical buttons can be mapped however you like, and we'll show you that in a bit. The OLED screen can be navigated by the physical buttons or by touch, which is very nice. Now, one of the big pluses for this remote is that apparently most things on here can actually be replaced. The buttons, the screen, the battery, all by the end user. So that's that's nice. To set up the remote, there is a web interface. No app. No app. Sounds weird, doesn't it? 2023, 2024, no app. That's that's the future. <laughs> it almost brings a smile to your face, doesn't it? A lot of smart devices require apps to run, and it's something that you need to be careful with because if the company goes away, so does their app in the App Store. Doing it this way uh, with the remote means that your device will always function regardless of what happens to the company, so A+. plus. This could be the end game that will infinitely avenge all previous Universal remotes. See? That was a callback to the Iron Man thing earlier. Okay, I'll get on with it. The web interface currently requires a desktop browser, so PC, laptop, or tablet. That doesn't quite work on a phone browser yet, but they are updating it and making it more user-friendly all the time, so I'm sure that will come soon. The amount of customization you have here is crazy. You can set up these main pages to have lists of activities or devices. You can even set profiles so different users have different layouts. If I edit the page for one of my remotes, let's go for the soundbar. Here is where I can map the buttons for that device and add other buttons to the touchscreen. I can add more pages to the touchscreen. So now when I go to control that device, boom, everything is there. Activities is where this really shines and where it will give you a lot more customization. Let's create a test activity. We'll add the devices we want to use and we'll create a simple on-off sequence. So now when you start this activity, it will run through this sequence and when you turn off the activity, it will run through the off sequence. Up here is a switch to keep the remote awake when this activity is on. Very useful because when the remote sleeps, there is a few seconds where it reconnects to everything when it wakes up. Having it prevent sleep will mean the remote stays always super responsive for when you need to hit mute or pause quickly, but it will use slightly more battery. I have it on for TV-related activities. 
Hitting the edit user interface lets us have some fun. Not that kind of fun, but do join the dozens of others on that channel for tech comedy. <laughs> we can remap all of the physical buttons here like we did with the device page, except now we can choose any device that we chose when we created the activity. We can add things to the touch screen, choose custom icons, add new pages. I want a macro here, but I forgot to add it when we created the activity. It's no big deal, just go back, search. These are my macros for lights. Now I can assign them to that button. We also have this fancy media button, which you can assign a media player to, and it will show you what is now playing. I, I love that. You probably noticed that I have some things on my list that might look a little bit strange. Well, they come from the incredible Home Assistant integration. Home Assistant is a central local hub for all of your smart devices like SmartThings or Apple HomeKit, but local, open source, and free. It guides you through setting up Home Assistant, which is pretty easy, but it doesn't import all of your Home Assistant entities at once, which is good. Because if you're anything like me, you have hundreds of entities, most of which aren't very useful here. <laughs> but you just go into the integration, search or choose what you want, drag it over. So I've got various lights, wake on land for PC, PS5 power control, uh, IP HDMI control for the soundbar. And once they are in there, you can use them in any activity. The dock also charges the remote and that's where it blasts the IR signals from. There is an IR blaster built into the remote, but as of right now, it's not switched on. That's coming in a future firmware update. The remote is super customizable. The build quality is excellent and it feels like an Apple product in a good way. I think it's pretty sexy. For you developers out there, I'm not doing the thing. I'm not doing, okay, do the thing. Developers, 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 developers. That's a sweaty man. For you developers out there, there is an API that is completely open and super well documented. Anything you can do on the remote or the web interface, you can do in the API. And I think you can might actually be able to do slightly more in the API than the web interface and on the remote. Okay, but is it perfect? No, <laughs> it's not. Is it finished? Also no. The hardware is fantastic. It feels great, it looks great. The only issue with the hardware can be the battery life. Currently, you will get a few days with moderate slight use. However, if you need to keep it awake when an activity is active, that time is shortened significantly. And you'll want to make sure you put it back in the dock every night. Now, I'm fairly confident battery life can be extended with some tweaks in software and that it will only get better as more updates are released. So. We'll keep an eye on that one. And speaking of software, while it is stable for the most part and integrations are working well, I did have a couple of lockups where I had to restart the remote. But after each firmware update, this is becoming much less of an issue and I haven't had to restart it in a, in a very long time. The firmware updates seem to be coming through fairly regularly, which is good to see. Another thing to look out for is the wake up time. After sleep, it takes a couple of seconds to reconnect to your Wi-Fi before you can use it again, which isn't a really big deal. Things like IR work straight away, but after it's reconnected, some integrations can take a little bit longer to come back to life. Not ideal if you need to mute immediately. You can keep it awake when a particular activity is on to stop that, but as I've said, that comes at the cost of battery life. Future Buzz here with a slightly worse microphone, don't worry about it. Integration wake up time has been significantly improved with recent firmware updates. The IR code database is very limited right now, and that's that's being generous. <laughs> As in most of your devices probably won't be on there. The learning feature works great and you can import codes from other sources, but I know that will be a concern for some of you. The code database will develop over time, but it's nowhere near, not even close to what Logitech had. The big question, should you buy it? Make it bigger. It's a big question, that's better. Like all new relationships, it's complicated. If you have a fire stick and a soundbar that you want to control, probably not, because this remote isn't cheap and you're probably better off with something much cheaper like the Sofa Baton U2, which is a great, easy, universal remote control. A uh, link for my review on that is in a pin. I'll put it in a pinned comment, we'll do that. <laughs> Or maybe even just try and get everything to work with CEC if you're brave enough. If you have a smart home and a lot of stuff tied into Home Assistant, then that's where things get a bit more 
interesting because the Home Assistant integration is incredible. Anything you have in Home Assistant, you can control with this. And if you have a complicated setup and need to juggle multiple inputs, HDMI switches, things of that sort of nature, then this will make you happy. Well, that's not a guarantee. It made me happy. <laughs> let's, let's leave it there. But it's still not finished yet software-wise. So if you like to tinker and find workarounds uh, for edge use cases and you don't mind a couple of bugs here and there, for the time being at least, then it's a good choice. If you need it to be rock solid out of the box for mission critical stuff and to get a WAF, I'd say wait for a little bit. The Discord is extremely active. You can follow progress on there and there's a bug tracker on GitHub and they seem to implement suggestions really quickly. If the suggestions make sense, of course. I made a UI suggestion and it was in the next firmware release. And, and that's something that you don't, that's almost impossible to get from a big company. So it's, it's nice to see. Now the hardware is right and the software has a little way to go and then a little bit further to go. <laughs> I said it's not cheap, so make sure you're sitting down. So the price is 449 euros or 459 dollars US, which puts it at hundred dollars above the launch price for the Logitech Harmony Elite, which was released in 2017. And that only lasted six years. But th that said, this should be the last universal remote that you will ever need. When all of the software is finished, you don't have to worry about the remote being supported because it, it doesn't rely on the cloud or anything external, which is becoming more rare these days. It is popular. There's a reserve list. So if you do want it, you, <laughs> you might want to get on that list. But for now, lose control in the comments below. Opinions, question, rants, we want it all. And until next time, keep playing and be excellent to each other.